Hey guys, welcome back once again to Tips from the Server Room. This is episode number 155 for January the 20th, 2021. I'm your host, Jack. I'm going to be guiding you into, through, and back out of the world of systems administration, network administration, and all fields of IT. So as the title has surely given it away by now, um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit. I hope this mic is not really uh, too high here. But I am going to talk to you a little bit about jobs in the IT field. Now, I've been working in the IT field for well over 25 years. Many of you know uh, now I am actually uh, from my last podcast, which I'm sorry, the last podcast was, let me see when the last podcast actually was here. It looks like it was December the 6th, and it was called Educating Students. So evidently now you know that I am a, I'm educating, I am an educator um, for the uh, better term of maybe instructor, uh, but I do teach and I teach at a career technical center and I'm teaching uh, cybersecurity and networking. But I've had a bunch of career changes in my, in my adult life. And what I mean by those adult uh, career changes not only have, have I done, a, I've had a very colorful work history. Uh, everything from being in the service to being a paramedic uh, to working on ambulances and uh, everything in between. You know, and, and you start out as a, as a young kid. Uh, you know, you start out in some of those fields where you're doing things like, um, you know, you're working at uh, a 7-Eleven or, or, or a convenience store in your neighborhood or something or maybe fast food. But it hasn't been since I found technology 25 years ago that I found there's so many facets of the job that you can actually do and you can actually put your time into and involve your mind and uh, your hours of educating either way, either going to colleges or educating yourself. I personally like the site called Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, if you're learning server stuff, I really like my site, jtclearning.com, jtclearning.com, where you can learn a ton of information about setting servers up and server administration. I'm also planning on trying to revamp that site. I'm working on some new courses. It, it does take time to build the courses out, of course. I mean, you know that, and I'm very busy, especially now with my own students, um, you know, and and seeing these, uh, this this group of uh, young men and young women every day, and and uh, you know putting the lessons together for that facet of my life. I mean, those have to be uh, spot on, and they have to be prepared for the students. But I do like teaching you guys also. I like teaching the adult group uh, that I have on these uh, podcasts, and I love teaching and giving back to the community. But today we're going to talk a little bit something different here. We're going to talk a little bit about you know, if you're kind of coming in, you're not really sure about technology fields, and I'm trying to help out a lot of people here, or maybe you have been in the technology field for a long time, you just don't know where to go next. You don't know what that next job might be. So what we're going to talk about today is, and my eyes are going to come up and down here, I'm looking at a, a monitor right below the camera, but we're going to talk about a few facets of technology, and a lot of these I have done. Uh, so I have a lot of background in them, but I'm going to kind of give you an idea of where people start and where you can go. And I think that's going to help you out. And uh, or maybe even I'll tell you maybe even where you can where you can plug yourself in at. Uh, I also used to have, have a, a lot of interns from local colleges that worked with me for years, and you know I kind of helped them get started in a career field where I thought maybe they really excelled. So. We're going to talk about this a little bit today here on the show. And uh, again, welcome back. And if you have any questions about any of this, please email me at tipsfromtheserverroom at gmail.com. I would love to hear uh, from you or if you have any questions about any of these fields or these things I'm going to tell you about today, drop me a line. All right, so the first job is, and you'll hear a lot of people get involved with this, is phone support. Now, phone support's not really a glamorous job. It really doesn't pay well at all. But it allows you to get a better understanding of how computer users have trouble working with computers. Now, you might say, well, Jack, what does that matter? Who really cares uh, what kind of issues a computer user has? When I was working for a private school, I would sit with people 
uh, that was doing the jobs, whatever they were. One happened to be a medical billing uh, person. They did all the medical billing for the private school that I worked at. And what they had to do was they had to get uh, verification from the insurance company that it would cover certain treatments, whatever that treatment could be for, for that person. And they were doing these things one at a time, one at a time. So they'd have uh, Mr. John, uh, Mr. Frank, Mr. Bill. They would do these one at a time. It was a very tedious project or process. It took them many, many days to do this. So why am I telling you this? Because I understood what the computer user was struggling with, what was happening. And it gave me, and I wasn't doing phone support now, I was doing administration work, but it gave me a really good look at what they needed. So I sat back and I started drawing a plan out. I like to draw plans out with flow charts. You draw a flow chart out of what issue you're having at the top, and draw some lines down and try to put boxes down here and figure out how can you make a solution? What can be the possible solution to, to that issue at the top? And it will help you a lot. You know, We'll talk about that further down the road, maybe in some more of these podcasts and these videos. Oh, by the way, just so you know, this is uh, on YouTube. If you look up 42 Technoman, the number four, the number two Technoman on YouTube, there is a video edition of this podcast also. Again, you're just going to see me talking today, but we're going to go through this. So yeah, the phone support is not a glamorous job, but what that allowed me to do was actually write a program that was able to take all those names and put them in a batch. So it would just basically take all those people and write them into a text file, take that text file, and it was submitted at night. The next morning they came back in, and I wrote a back-end program that would take that text file and write it back into their database and let them know if it was approved or denied. So I took a five to six day process they would do once a month and we turned that into a basic uh, a push pull. They pulled the data. Uh, yeah, no, they pushed the data up and then they pulled it back of about 10 minutes worth of work and it batched at night. The only reason we had to wait for it to batch at night was because of the insurance companies. That's just the way they worked. So knowing what computer users are going through is going to help you become a better understanding and, and a better, um, I always say, technicians, technologists, network people, computer server people, we are the solution providers, right? Everybody's doing a job today with computers. People made these computers back in the early, what, 70s and 80s. Everybody adores them. They love them. But everybody does something different with the computer. So it's our job to walk into any company, any business, any education facility, wherever, and bring solutions because we're looking at the computer as a tool and they're using the tool kind of as a wrench, right? So they're using the tool, but we're providing the backend services. The next one I want to tell you about is hardware repair. Now, this is a very nice entrance level job into learning more about computers and what happens when they break down. It will also allow you to increase your troubleshooting skills. I worked one time, well, when I was at that private school, actually, when I first got hired there, uh, my last interview, and it was the, probably the best or weirdest interview I've ever had in my life. My last interview, I walked in, the CEO picks up his computer. It was sitting on the side there on the floor, and he hands it to me. He says, here, Jack, he said, take this home. If you can repair this computer and call me first, let me know what the cost is, um, if you can repair it and bring it back and have it working um, for, you know, whatever. He just said, you know, I'll give you the job. I said, well, that sounds like an interesting interview. Probably one of the best I've ever had. I love hands-on interviews. So I took the computer home. And once I got the computer at home, I started to troubleshoot it. And I was looking here trying to figure out what was going on. And, you know, you put the computer on the bench. You plug a network cable in the back. Well, it was getting no... Um, no network connection. There was no networking going on at all. Now, you had an onboard network card. And so I'm like, huh. So I started thinking about it a little bit. So my buddy owned a computer shop. I went to his computer shop. I said, hey. I said, Bill, do you have a network card? Bill said, yeah, I got a network card over there. Uh, Jack, you know, I stock them. I said, how much? He said, $9. I said, fine. Give me a network card. I took the network card home. I turned the onboard network uh, card off in the BIOS. I just deactivated it. And plugged the new network card in the PCI slot. Sure enough, the computer worked just fine. So I called the CEO back that same day and I said, Hey, um, Mr. Uh, we'll call him Mr. Frank. 
I said, Mr. Frank, I have this uh, computer ready for you. And he said, wait, already? He said, you've only had it for, it was like maybe four hours. I took it home, troubleshot it, had to go to the store and buy the card. And I said, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I had to go out and buy a card. I didn't have a network card. He said, a network card? I said, yeah. He goes, huh. He said, the, the outsourcing company they had working for them, the way that their solution was to everything, and don't ever do this. They said, hey, we're going to put a new motherboard in here. It would be like you taking your car to to a mechanic because there's a um, you know a fan belt is loose. And they go, okay, we'll just replace the engine, right? No, you, you troubleshoot it, find out what the what the problem is, and and you give a solution to that problem. And uh, he was so amazed. I said, when when do you want me to bring this computer back to you and drop it off? I said I can run it back out, you know, to the school. And he goes, Jack, I tell you what. He said, when can you start work? I said, two weeks. He goes, bring it back the Monday you start. He said, that would be soon enough. Thank you so much. Uh, and he explained to me about that company wanting to change the motherboard. So instead of them sending him a bill for, you know, $250 is what they would charge for a board, it, it cost them $9 for the price of the card. So, uh, but that is how, you know, you troubleshoot. You have to learn good troubleshooting skills. And I think being a hardware repair guy We'll give that to you unless you're one of these people that and don't ever work for a company where they're like, hey, Frank, uh, just go out and replace every motherboard in there. Um, it, it, that's just bad news. And you're just, uh, you know, not doing a proper job and you're defrauding the customer. So don't ever do that. All right. The next step up here is server technician. So now we know how to work on computers. We know how to do hardware work. But now we're going to start working on some servers. We're going to be a server technician. So uh, this is one once you have more skills and knowledge of hardware, I feel the server technician position will allow you to better understanding and working with servers while under the supervision of someone who has been working for servers for years. This is key. Not to say that you're not smart enough, you're intelligent enough, you've studied enough, you've taken my course at jtclearning.com and you know everything there is to know about servers. It's still really a good idea to work under a server technician or work under a server admin or some kind of server person that has been around them for years just so you could build your skills. Hands-on skills, and that's what we do at the CTCs, hands-on skills many times will outweigh theoretical skills hands down. And it's because you got to be able to put it here. I interviewed a guy one time. He came in and he had this binder. And I said, wow, that's a really nice looking binder. What's in there? Oh, he says, all of my certifications. Really? You have that many certifications? He said, yeah, look. He said, I have uh, A+, B+, C++, D. I got, uh, you know, networking plus. I got security plus. I got Cisco, all the Cisco uh, uh, certifications. I said, wow, that's wonderful. I said, how many years have you been working in the field? None. Zero. No time in the field. Um, okay, well, did you build your own network at home? You have your own hands-on lab? None. No hands-on labs at all at home. No, nothing. Okay, we have a problem here because he doesn't know how to put it in his hands, right? Just because you have it in your head would be great. If you want to be a professor in a school, perfect. You can tell people how to do things. If you want to be a teacher in a CTC or if you want to do a job, you have to put it in your hands. You have to touch the equipment, be able to connect it up, whatever that is. And, and so I didn't hire the guy. I didn't, it, it was, he was, did you ever hear sometimes you're overqualified? He was overcertified. Um, he, he should have took some of that time and went to some uh, community college and even a two-year tech program and, and got some hands-on abilities. And I think he would have been amazing. So, you know, it, the, the old adjective is, you know, the, the old saying goes, you know, you can, you can read a book and take a test, but if you can't put it together, then you're not really worthwhile of having you there. So keep that thought in mind. You, you have to know the theory, and you also have to be able to put it into your hands, okay? All right, the next one would be networking technician. So you work on networking is one of the long-term jobs you should be seeking someday in your career. It allows you to see the larger picture of how computers are connected together and will teach you how to form small office networks and build upon your skills to build much larger company networks. Networking is the meat and potatoes of our business. If you can learn networking and understand the interconnection of switches, 
the interconnection of how the wiring goes, uh, fiber optics, you know, all everything that goes to, with it, and uh, learn routing and switching. You're going to be a very, very valuable person. And as each of these are going up, your pay is actually increasing. So a network technician, again, should work under a network administrator. You should have somebody there that you know you can work under. Here's a problem, and I know a lot of uh, my young men in going to uh, going to my classes, taking my classes right now. We are doing a tremendous job on Cisco networking. These uh, young men have these commands floating in their heads already. They understand. They can see the packets in their head as it's going through the wire. That's what you have to be able to do. You have to be, excuse me, you have to be able to visualize the network. Now, here's the problem is, but these young men are new, right? You're new to the game. And or if you're just coming out of school, you're new to the game. So even if I hired you into my company and maybe I'm the network administrator, I have this golden title of network administrator, you may in fact know more items than I know. And that's okay. I have a position because of my years of service and people understand that I have the understanding of how to put it together and make it work. But you may know some kind of amazing command. You're like, I know more than that guy. But you still want to work under that network administrator to learn what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I was going to talk to you about that today, but I figured first I'd go through this. We are going to get into the point where I'm going to talk to you like a day in the life of a network guy, the day in the life of a technician, to kind of give you, you know, that what is your day looking like. But you have to see what their day looks like. The network administrator does a lot more than just networking, and we'll talk about that sometime. The next step up would be a server administrator because now you know about servers. Now you know about networks. You have some server technician work. You have some network technician work. Now you can take that golden role of server administrator. And what the server administrator is, like I said, once you have the last two skills, you can apply for the admin job. In this role, you will be supervising at least the last two groups of people and be able to help them increase their skills. It works really, really well. I was just looking at this uh, microphone. Yeah, okay. Anyway, I'm trying to record on two uh, two different mediums right now. We're, I'm recording for YouTube here, and I'm actually recording using Audacity uh, for my uh, for the podcast side of things. So they're both recording at once. So yeah, the server administrator, you're going to have these two groups of people looking up to you now. So that's why you need that networking technician ability to know what's going on with your network and the server ability. Again, you don't have to be the smartest of those two people. It's just you have to know what those two people are trying to accomplish throughout the day. So when you give them a job or you give them something to do, you know that they have the time to complete that task. That's the role of the server administrator is to and to actually oversee all of your servers. So it's very important to understand stuff like DHCP, DNS, um, how to set up uh, group policies, all of that great stuff goes with that server administrator role. The next one is the role that I truly love is network administrator. I feel the network admin role will be able to oversee all the skills before it. So if you're a network administrator, now you're starting to pull yourself away from that. I call it the, the face of the technology department. The uh, server administrator or the technology director or anybody at that role, a lot of times you have to talk to people all day and uh, it's kind of, um, you're making people understand what you're doing. Where the network administrator gets to go back, pull yourself back a little bit, sit in a server room somewhere and manage everything from behind a curtain, right? Like remember the Wizard of Oz when, when the, the wizard was behind the curtain pulling the levers? That would be you. But the network administrator has the ability to, to manage the server administrator, the network technician, and the server technician. So you can manage the whole team because I feel that the network administrator is now a higher level role than even the server administrator. So now once you get through the hardware part of it and you go, well, okay, that's pretty much all the hardware stuff that I could be. Uh, again, you can go and be the technology director at some point in your career. You can apply for those jobs. You'll have enough abilities. Be careful when you look at those. I looked at one technology director position. Uh, this is years ago, and I was looking at the qualification. It said they wanted you to have a doctorate. 
I don't know why. I don't know what doctorate you would even have for that level. But people that hire us, the technology department, we're usually anywhere from one to three people in, in a maybe in a, in a medium-sized company. So the people hiring you as an HR person, what they do is they look at ads from other companies and they can look at ads from Fortune 500 companies with, you know, a tech department of 500. Like PNC has a whole floor of technologists. It's a bank. But they kind of copy and paste, right? And they don't even really know what they're looking for. They don't even know who to hire. I hire based on skill level. I like to hire based on uh, years of service. And I like to hire based on what you know. Not so much of where you went to school at, not so much of, you know, you have a master's degree. Um, just because if you walk in somewhere with a master's degree, and I've seen this, you walk in with a master's degree and somebody walks in with an associate's degree, sometimes the associate's degree person will get hired over that master's degree. Now, you may say that's not right because you spent a lot more money for college. But again, book smarts or hands-on smarts, right? That's the difference in life is you have to have that balance of both when you do these jobs. So be very careful when you read an ad. Um, sometimes even when the ad says they want a master's degree and you only have a bachelor's, send in a resume anyway. It, it never hurts anymore. I mean, you're not mailing it. We're just emailing it. So once we get out of the server-based roles and the hardware roles, there's things like database admin programmer. So database admin, and I put programmer, I kind of put them together. They kind of go together. I feel software is more, uh, if it's more to your liking, I would suggest you learn to seek out a job of database person. I would also suggest an understanding of setting up database software such as uh, SQL or, or SQL a Server or MySQL or MySQL and have a good understanding of backing these up and restoring them if needed. The reason I say this, I've worked with a lot of server admins. They don't really know Linux. Another great uh, something great that you can learn is some Linux abilities. But they don't understand Linux. So when you ask them to set up like MyraDB on, on a Linux server, they're lost. So know how to do that yourself. Know how to back your stuff up. Know how to restore it because you can't trust a Windows server administrator to really understand. They'll do a pretty good job with SQL server, Microsoft SQL server. So they'll do a really good job with that. But some of the other stuff kind of works both ways. You have to learn a little bit to uh, maintain your own stuff. But uh, yeah, database administrators is a high paying job. It's in high demand everywhere because everything today is getting written in a database. The next thing is just a, a programmer. And I say just a programmer. It's funny. And I'm amazed how many people I talk to about programming just turn away from the thought. I've written programs for many companies. And I mean, I find it very relaxing. I like programming. Um, been teaching Python programming for, for a few years, and I enjoy pro programming in Python. Um, I enjoy programming in um, Visual Basic. A lot of people go, that's not a real programming language. It writes, and it's created a lot of software that's still in use today. So Visual Basic is really a good one for me uh, when writing Windows programs. I've dabbled in Xcode on the Mac. Um, to be honest, I created one application that all it did, you push the button and it like a cow mood. It was one of those sample apps to create. And I've never really created any working applications for iOS or the Mac. But uh, Windows, I've created a lot. And today I do a lot of programming. But I told you earlier on about that story about the private school. How I was able to use a, my programming knowledge to write something very useful for that school to save them a lot of time, a lot of man hours. And that's what we do, right? We're a solution provider. Even if you're not going into programming, learn some sort of programming. Understand it. You don't have to be the very best. You can be one of these people that when you're writing programs, and I know people that's been programming for years that do this. They go to Google. They go to a programming site. And they'll look for code already written. And then they'll manipulate that code to do what they want it to do. So, but you have to know enough to be able to read it and understand how to manipulate it. Also with programming, I just wanted to throw out there, and I'll be teaching this in my classes pretty soon, is scripting. Scripting with um, Visual Basic uh, uh, VB uh, scripts, you know, uh, are, are huge. Uh, PowerShell scripting is absolutely blowing up right now. And 
and scripting like uh, I like writing Linux based scripts, bash or shell scripting is huge because again, it's all about automation. Anything we can do to make our days uh, as a technologist easier or better um, and getting away from it. I hate this stuff, the repetitive stuff. I hate repetitive work. If it's something I got to do every single day and I do it the same way, then I'm scripting it so the server will do it for me. I don't have to deal with it. So just makes your life easier. So at the end of the day, guys and, and girls out there, you know, definitely find a job that you want to wake up every morning and go to work because going to work and getting up every day is probably one of the worst things you have to do as what we call the adult, right? Adulting. My daughter Tess says, Dad, I can't do this adulting. I said, honey, you have a long way to go. Um, you know, I'm getting older. I'm at the end of my time of working, you know, getting closer to that golden age of retirement. But I have found over my lifetime, if you get up in the morning, you take a shower, and you get in the car, and you're humming and singing on your way to work, then you really like your job because you don't want a job that's just the same routine, mundane thing every day in and out because – by the time you do that for three months, you're going to just be absolutely horribly mortified over it. Uh, so you have to find something you like to do, find something that gives you energy. Um, you know, and I found this with, with educating, with teaching. It, it energized. Yeah, there's days, you know, that's a little rougher than others. I mean, there's, you know, I mean, we have um, young men. I have young men that come into the room, you know, and maybe a uh, young man's having a bad day. Maybe I'm having a bad day. You know, we all have to get along. We have, It's just a little group effort. We have to get along. We have to be able to uh, help to educate them. So, you know, but I've had jobs where I got up in the morning and the last thing I wanted to do was get in the car. I didn't want to go to work. And, and you, you hate that feeling that when you get there, it's like I just want it to be over and I want to go home. Um, but that was jobs of the past, you know, and usually I would maintain those jobs for two or three months just to get resumes out and find a new position somewhere. So, you know, never stop looking. I can always tell you that too. You know, if, if you're not happy, look, don't, don't sit somewhere for, for 10 years and be absolutely mortified. Look for another position. Once you know technology, all the technology is basically the same in any company you go to. Some of the applications are just different. You can learn those on the fly. It's very simplistic. Um, remember also, um, Companies and, and money out there. Here's one thing I, I want to mention. I wrote this down about companies. When you do get a job, make sure the company says, look, we're going to offer to, to pay for you to have some courses to continue your education. Because one thing technology does not do, it does not stop. It evolves every day. It gets different and better and changes. And, and if you're not changing with it, you're sitting at a company and you're doing what you did five years ago and you put that resume out, you're totally worthless. You, you absolutely lost the whole entire uh, scheme of things. So there you have that. And also be very careful about taking a job for the pay. You know, that sounds, if you're young and you're listening to this, or if you're looking for a job and you're out of work, I did that one time. I, I took a job uh, because I was out of work. I was laid off. It's like, oh, my God, I need a job so bad. Oh, uh, you know, and I took a job and, and they undercut me by about $40,000 a year. And one, I hated it. Two, I knew they got over on me. But three, I thought I really needed a job, and I found out that I really didn't need it. So it lasted it lasted a month, and I was out of there. So that happens. Sometimes you just take the wrong job. Um, but again, don't take it for more money. Watch if you get a job and you take it for 150000 a year, uh, you're going to be living at your job. So be very careful, especially when you're taking a salary position. They will have you working all the time. So be very, very careful. So I hope that this helps you uh, figure things out. I hope this gets you started in the technology field in the proper manner. If you're already in the technology field, I hope that this gave you a little guidance of maybe your next path, your next way of going to another job. And But don't ever stop looking. Again, they always say technologist usually has, has a, no, uh, I call it a shelf life of three years. So if you're in a job, you're going to be there three years. You should start looking for another position, unless there's unless there's advancement. So if you're doing a network, if you're doing a server technician job, and you know you can get promoted to networking, or you can get promoted to the network administrator job or server administrator, that's okay. But if there's no advancement and you're just kind of hanging in there, 
look for another job and move on, right? And try to always increase your skills. So take care, everybody. And remember, at the very least, I always tell you, you know, follow your dreams. That This is a big field. There's a lot to talk about. That's why I started this podcast several years ago. And I'm trying to keep up on as much as humanly possible with everything else going on. So thanks again for watching and listening to Tips from the Serve Room. And I will talk to you next time. Take care. Live your dreams. I'll see you later. Bye for now.